When building microcontroller projects, we all have used this Arduino IDE with its inbuilt functions to get a project working. But have you ever wondered what these functions actually do and how they help us achieve this required result? Or why does this simple delay function become so unreliable for a longer period of time? So in this video, let's understand the core working of Arduino's Atmega 328P and start to break out of the restriction of using the Arduino IDE with traditional methods. So let's get started. Before we get started, let's have a quick look at the basics of bitmath. This includes bitwise AND, bitwise OR, bitwise NOT and bitwise XOR with additional right shift and left shift operators. We can use this simple concepts to manipulate a particular bit in the data and write what is essentially called a bare metal code. So let's see how. If we consider this large binary number and just want to change its LSP bit to 1 without affecting the remaining bits, we can simply bitwise OR the number with another number having 1 at the required position and 0 everywhere else. Also, the same would be the case when we need 0 at a particular bit, but we'll just have to use bitwise AND this time. Similarly, we can use NOT operator to invert the bit values, XOR operator to toggle the bit values, and right shift and left shift operators to shift positions of these bits. Now let's see how we can use these concepts to begin writing our first blink program with bare metal code. Firstly, let's have a closer look at the spinout of our Arduino Nano, which we can easily find on Google, and say we would like to blink an LED at pin 13. We can see that here it says PB5, which means port B pin 5. If we now look at the datasheet of atmega 328 p we can find this IO port section, which has three major registers. Port X, that is the data register, then the DDR register, that stands for data direction register, and finally pin X, which is for port input pins. Now the first step of a code is to set our required pin to output, which is done by setting the bit in the DDR register to 1. So that means we'll have to set the fifth bit of DDR register for port B to 1. Next, in the main loop, we need to toggle the output, which here is achieved by toggling the fifth bit of port B data register. Now, all we need to do is convert this code flow into actual code. So let's fire up our IDE. By setting the DDRB register in the setup section, and toggling the output data followed by an empty for loop to signify the delay in the main section, we are pretty much done with the code. Once we compile and upload this code, we can see that the LED blinks just like in the example code, but only this time we know what the code is exactly doing. Okay, moving on. What about the issue we faced with the delay function earlier? This can be solved using the timers of the microcontroller. Let's try to use the 16-bit timer 1 in this case. This timer has a CTC mode, that is, clear timer on compare match mode, that helps us achieve the precise timed events. This basically means that the timer value is continuously compared with the value on OCR register and an interrupt is generated when the match occurs. This helps us get a beautifully timed square waveform at the output at OCA1 pin, which is pin 9 of our Arduino Nano. However, the timing for the waveform can be set using this formula here. Say, if we need the timing of exactly 1 second, we just need to select the input clock as 16 MHz, because that's what our Arduino has, and a prescaler which means the resolution as 256 and this gives us the OCR value of 62,499, which in hex is F423. Now, to execute this timed event properly, we just need to set the COM1A0 bit in TCCR1A register as we need the toggle functionality, the WGM 
12 bit and CS12 bit in TCC R1B register as we need the CTC mode with prescalar as 256 and finally the interrupt enable bit in TIMSK1 register in order to enable the interrupt. To convert this flow into actual code, we just need to set the correct values to the respective registers and finally define an interrupt service routine by referring to this table. This service routine can now help us perform tasks at precise timings like maybe displaying a time interval. Once we upload the code, we see here this solves the unreliability issue we had earlier with the delay function as even at much longer durations, the timing remains precise. Also, this process remains independent of the main loop. We can test this concept by a simple experiment by just adding a LED at pin 9 to check the timer output and another LED at pin 13 to add in the main loop whose blink timing is controlled by this external potentiometer. In the code, however, we just need to set up the timer pin to output and a simple blink command in the main loop. With this setup, when we upload the code, we can see that the timer is not at all dependent on the main loop. Pretty awesome, right? However, this brings us to the end of the video. But if you have a lot of time to spare, you can even read the entire 300 page datasheet for the Atmega 328P to know literally everything about it. Also, if you would like to try out any of the code shown in this video, you can find the GitHub link in the description below. Anyways, hope you liked this video and gained a little more knowledge about the core working of the microcontrollers. If you did, please like, share and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. See you in the next one. Until then, keep learning and keep growing. Peace out.